hi guys i know you guys are wondering lexi where have you been you left us hanging it's been a long time it's been a long time <laughs> i haven't last seen you guys since january 3rd 2nd ish somewhere around there um that's the last time i posted my last video so there is a lot that we need to catch up on so let's get into that I just do want to start off that this is my community where I share my experiences with you. My experiences won't be your experiences. They won't be your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your friends, yours. It won't be your story. So I just do want to throw that out there with you. Um, within the aviation industry, we have a very diverse employee environment. So with that being said, please don't bash on other people. Um, if you go to that Facebook page that I had mentioned, the Flight Attendant Career Connection, or other flight attendant pages, they may share their experiences with you, whether they're good or they're bad, or they've applied a million times and haven't got on, or they think something's wrong. This whole experience is a journey for each and every single one of us, and if you have applied to be a flight attendant, you know this. So, I just want to say, be mindful of others and their journeys for what they have been through because we all work really hard to get this job. Now, I'm just gonna say, please do not bash me for my experience. Um, my experience is not your experience. Once again, y'all, I just really wanted to document this experience with you and maybe, you know, share my journey with you, hoping that it might be able to help some, some others or some other people on their way to their journey, or maybe I could help with applications, whatever the case may be, so be it because we all know it's really hard with the interviewing process. So now you might not agree with every single thing that I have said or will say. Your experience might be a whole different experience than mine, but please don't take the time out of your day to sit there and bash my experience or who I am or how I present myself on this page because you personally don't know me. Until you know me in person, you do not know who I am. You don't know how hard I work. You do not know the journey or the shoes that I have been through or that I'm walking with. Um, you know, I am different than other people. And so I've had people come on this page calling me a snowflake and then I'll never make it to being a flight attendant. And, you know, just being a keyboard warrior and sitting there and typing your 1200 character post on my video accurately describes who you are as a person when it could take two clicks just to click out of my video or just not even watch it um you know so I just really want to say on this page please don't bash other people for the airline that they're with or their experience that they try to share with you or you know the experience that they're documenting you know some people want to look back on their videos or maybe they just want to inform other people um so I'm just going to leave that here so with that being said, we move forward on that on this channel. Um, there's a lot that we need to get into. So I know it has been so long since I last chatted with you guys about a year and a lot of ups and a lot of downs have happened since I last talked to you guys and they're still coming at full force. Um, but I'm officially a US mainline flight attendant. It has taken almost three and a half years to get to this point and I am officially here and I'm officially off probation and I'm officially flight leader qualified and we are just full on going at all of the things. Um, so with that being said, January 3rd I went to training and training was supposed to be six weeks. We had roommates to begin the training experience with. For the first two weeks and then we ended up getting separated because COVID just came in full force. Training class, um, which sucked, but then we got split up and we got our own hotel rooms for the remaining... <laughs> I'm a flight attendant, I can't do math. Uh, remaining four weeks. However, on week five going into week six, I did t test positive for COVID during training and I do not think that, I mean, my entire training experience, I stayed quarantined, I was not around anybody, our class was very quiet, 
Um, everybody pretty much kept to themselves. As far as I know, I literally never went out and did anything. Um, but I never got asked to either. But I think I did get it. Um, week five and six, we did training flights and on, or sorry, four and five. And on week five, um, I had my last training flight and my flight leader's work phone said, you've been exposed to COVID-19. And of course we had our masks off and we were talking. And do I know if he really got COVID? No, but literally the next morning I tested positive and they were testing us every single day for COVID. So I don't know, that's just kind of weird. But my overall training experience ended up being eight weeks. Um, and so when graduation came, uh, the company expressed that it should be one of the best days of your life, that they're going to make sure of it, it's going to be a thing, um, and it's going to be a memory that we will never forget. However, <laughs> it didn't happen for me. Um, I was actually pretty and am still pretty disappointed in my graduation experience because they didn't fully communicate with me about... Um, you know how graduation was gonna go and if I could have people come because one one graduation they couldn't they couldn't have anybody come and then the next graduation it was the first graduation where they had family and friends show up so it was just a chaotic disaster I was the latest I think I still am the latest who got COVID in the last week of training and had to switch so abruptly even when I showed up to base orientation, the, the mentors, new hire mentors, they were like, we've been waiting for you for two weeks. And I'm like, I should have been here two weeks. And so my seniority, just because I was three days short of the final, my seniority got pushed back behind 300 people because I had to go to a different class. So that whole experience is something else. Am I happy about it? No, but whatever. We move on. I still made it. Um, so with that being said, uh, we got our bases on day three of training. Luckily enough, we almost got to pick from every single base. So that was nice. I think we got all of the picks besides like two or three different bases, which was great for our class because we could pick wherever we wanted to go. So I know you guys are thinking, okay, Lexi, where did you pick to go? Well, I'm sure you guys could already guess from my experience before. Um... I'm back in Salt Lake City <laughs> and I know you guys would have never thought but my experience in Salt Lake City so far has actually been really good it's been very good um, trips are very dry but the crews are great uh, international is not easy to get it's pretty senior in Salt Lake but I think within do the airport once all the construction and everything is done, we will be getting more international and I think it'll be easier to get some. Our airline has been hiring like crazy, so sen my seniority has went up significantly well and it just keeps on going up. However, in the month of November, I did get pushed back. My base got more senior, so it'll be interesting coming the new year once in February new classes start getting pushed out what my base will hold but it's okay if you want to apply you should apply and work with us <laughs> seniority really is everything though at Meanline, pay has been better however that it's with airlines it's a pick and choose battle if you decide to commute and guess what i do i commute so with choosing this choice, it becomes a price to pay. Um, so backtracking to my paychecks or my formal regional airline, I was paying around $600 for a crash pad um, and my paychecks weren't even close to $600. So then I decided to live out of my car in Salt Lake City in the airport parking lot and I couldn't even afford hotels. I couldn't barely even afford food for myself. And I didn't have a car in Arizona, so commuting wasn't easy. To get to my house was $137 from the airport, and it still is. So I drove my car all the way to Salt Lake City. I lived out of the back of it, you know, for a month, month and a half-ish. And then I was like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm done. And so with 
mainline. It's a little bit more different because I'm almost getting paid double what I got paid before. However, now I commit to staying in hotels instead of crash pads because in Salt Lake City, crash pads are super hard to find, um, which cost me a price. And then on top of it, at the time when I was at my regional airline, they didn't offer me airport parking. And now I have to pay for airport parking because my company does not offer it because Arizona is not a base. So there comes another price out of my paycheck and I have to, I have to pay it. So now that's the price that you pay within jumping airlines. It's a lot harder to save money, but I'm just saving a little bit, a little bit to get me by. But however, I can afford hotels and the airport parking, which helps me immensely. I mean, I love this job. I really do, but it's exhausting. And with this job, everybody thinks that they pick and choose the people that are perfect for this job. And of course, yeah, they try to. But I think truthfully, anybody can do this job if they really wanted to. However, the different commitments that you have to make when getting this job is the hard part. You don't get much of a home life. Um, if you're a person that doesn't like to like ho work holidays, good luck. Um, I've worked every holiday since I've been on with Mainline, which I don't have a, a problem with. Um, but I know some people do. And you're in and out of different time zones, which my body has not gotten used to 11 months in. I don't know if it ever will, to be completely honest with you. But on top of being a flight attendant, I also deal with a disease that I have to manage anytime I eat or drink something or anytime I get stressed. And you can only imagine being in aviation how much stress you really do get. It happens. Um, this job is crazy. <laughs> it keeps you young, but at the same time, you know, I don't... I started this job off thinking that it was going to be a forever thing. I'm in this like weird little period of my life. I'm like, eh, is it? And then the other part of me is like, oh, I'm going to be a flight attendant forever. Being a flight attendant is weird. So, you know, no, this job isn't for everyone. But I really, really do recommend if you are very adamant about trying to get this job, please look into what you're actually getting yourself into. There's so many people who vlog that share their experience. There are so many people on the flight attendant pages that share their experience. And you truthfully won't understand the job of a flight attendant until you step into the shoes of actually becoming one. Um, I, I love the company that I am with. However, I do consider on switching a fourth time. I'm not very sure on it because I'm back and forth on this whole career anyways, but um, I only say that because if you can work from where you live, game changer. I'm saving airport parking. I don't have to pay no more. Um, I'm saving for hotels. I don't get to have to sleep in hotels that often besides for when I'm working, but um, I don't have to worry about commuting in the day before because as a new hire, that's all I have to do. So I don't know. Anyways, I know that this was a very long but short what I have been up to, but I wanted to tell you guys I'm officially a mainline flight attendant. However, if I don't get back to you, there are personal reasons. Um, I've been going through it a lot just personally um and some things are very hard to mend but for some reason today it was just telling me to put myself together so I can go ahead and talk to you guys and share all the information with you if you want to know any more information please 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 let me know I do eventually want to do good vlogs however I just haven't had very many great trips most of my layovers are very short layovers and with my body adjusting from time zone to time zone and then taking care of a disease, I'm exhausted. I am very worn out. Even on my weekends, I end up sleeping the entire day. So bear with me. I'm trying to be here and be present and share my experience with you guys. And of course, I want to share what it's like 
being with a main line. But obviously, I have been with my company longer than I've been with my former main line and my regional. So that, that itself says a lot. Um, I'm doing very well, and it's only going to keep getting better. But I still have yet to do my first international. I really really want a good trip but I've also had a couple good trips I really like Anchorage um, Boston was a lot of fun uh, Panama City Florida great layover <laughs> but other than that I haven't had you know many layovers that I've got to see I'm still getting my feet in the water so once I do that, I will share more with you guys, but I'm glad if you're still here and you're excited and share with you my experience of becoming a mainline flight attendant. It was a very short but long brief introduction to let you guys know, but I hope that I can go over it more in detail one day. Until then, take care guys. Uh, if you have any video suggestions or any Q&As, let me know and I will answer them the the quickest I can or I'll make a video um, just depends uh, but yeah I hope you guys are all saying safe and warm and happy holidays <laughs>